had George Zimmerman in custody. We simply wanted an arrest. We wanted nothing more, nothing less. We just wanted an arrest, and we got it. And I say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We will march and march and march until the right thing is done. Charged with second-degree murder in the death of Trayvon Martin. Today, we filed an information charging George Zimmerman with murder in the second degree. His brother, Robert, speaks to me exclusively tonight about this sensational development and also asked top lawyers how this case is now likely to unfold. It is about justice, 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 and only justice. Plus, what is the shooter's state of mind? This is Piers Morgan tonight. Breaking news in the Trayvon Martin case and dramatic news it is too. George Zimmerman back in Florida arriving at Seminole County Criminal Justice Center under cover of darkness moments ago. This is his booking photo just released. Zimmerman is charged with second degree murder 45 days after the shooting death of Trayvon Martin. Tonight I'll talk exclusively to George Zimmerman's brother Robert but listen to what special prosecutor Angela Corey said about why it took so long to make an arrest. There is a reason cases are tried in a court of law, not in the court of the public, and not by the media. Because details have to come out in excruciating and minute fashion, detail by detail, bit of evidence by bit of evidence. And it's only then when the trier of fact, whether it's a judge or a jury, gets all of those details, that then the law is applied to that and a decision can be rendered. That's our big story here. Now to explain today's developments, ABC News legal analyst Dan Abrams and attorney Gloria Allred. Let me start with you, Dan. Uh, a dramatic day, a dramatic development. Put it into context, clearly this is not necessarily going to lead to what some may feel is an automatic trial. He goes to a judge first in Florida who could just throw the whole thing out. Well, that's right. Uh, the defense can ask for a hearing now to basically test out his defense, his stand your ground defense. And a judge could, at that point, believe that he's proved by a preponderance of the evidence that it's a valid defense and could literally throw out the case. That's not going to happen mm -hmm. uh, in this particular case. But what's interesting is the prosecutor's decision not to go for manslaughter, but to go for the most significant charge she could find without a grand jury, mm -hmm. which is second-degree murder. And that means this could not have been an accident and therefore Trayvon Martin was killed. No. When you're talking about second-degree murder, it can't be an accident. You're talking about a level of intent, depraved mind, an action which is imminently dangerous. These are important legal phrases, but the end result is he's facing now up to life instead of up to just 15 years. Gloria Allred, uh, should we assume from this fairly dramatic action by the state attorney that they have got evidence that we are not aware of? Well, they definitely have evidence that we are not aware of, and they're not revealing that evidence, Pierce, and it would be inappropriate for them to do so. It's clear that the, uh, Ms. Corey has said they're there to protect their case, and protecting their case means they're not going to reveal what they found in their investigation and their reinvestigation, which they have done. I don't, I, I, don't know, I don't know that they have that much. They'd have to have that much we don't know about. They certainly have more than the initial police department had. Well, let's just spell out here, because yeah. this is the criteria to prove beyond reasonable doubt second-degree murder. One, Trayvon Martin is dead. We know that as a fact. Two, Zimmerman's criminal act caused Trayvon Martin's death. Well, he shot him. That is not disputed. Was it a criminal act? That's, that is disputed. Three, there was an unlawful killing of Trayvon by an act imminently dangerous to another and demonstrating a depraved mind without regard for human life. Now, that seems, from all we know, a fairly strict criteria, actually, to be met by the prosecutor. And yet, by the fact they've driven this case, as you say, for the tougher second-degree murder rather than manslaughter, they must be confident of a successful prosecution. That's right. Well, you can also consider there, there could be lesser included offenses once the case goes uh, to the jury. So that's, that's still a possibility. The only evidence that I think that they, that they really may have that we don't know about is forensic type evidence, which is important. Um, but I think that in this case, the most important witnesses are going to be eyewitnesses who are the notoriously, uh, the, the witnesses who are notoriously problematic mm. are, eyewitness, are eyewitnesses. And nevertheless, I think that's what this case is going to be about. The audio tapes, who said, who heard what, how, is, how does that fit in with the timeline, et cetera. 
And that's all stuff that's now pretty much available, not just to the prosecutors, but to the public. Gloria, if you were prosecuting this case, where would you think the weaknesses are in George Zimmerman's case from everything you've seen and heard? Well, I would be thinking about where the flaws are. Um, and I would be interested in also what he allegedly has told uh, family members who have appeared on television, whether there are inconsistencies in what he has told the police, depending on what he has told the police. And uh, I would be interested in all of that. And I would be interested in the forensics. Uh, but uh, and of course, I'll be interested to see what the defense is going to be. Is it going to be that it was justifiable homicide? Is it going to be that uh, that Trayvon Martin was attempting to kill him or commit some kind of felony against him? Uh, and I would have to consider what the defense would be. Yeah, I mean, Dan, clearly... Surely it'll be self-defense. Yeah, I mean, I would imagine, Dan, he's going to try and defend himself under the grounds of stand your ground. I mean, it is a... Particularly in Florida, it's in 20-odd states, but in Florida, it's pretty wide, the parameters for that defense. And I would imagine, I'm a layman, not a lawyer, but that it gives him the best chance of getting off the stand your ground defense. Absolutely. Uh, he'd have to demonstrate that he reasonably believed he was in an Im imminent danger. Uh, the problem for him is going to be you can't use that if you're losing a fight, right? That, that, that's, that's not the time to stand your ground Particularly can apply. Particularly if you started the fight. Well, that, that, that's the crucial point. And that's why, actually, the missing few minutes that we know but, nothing about become utterly and crucial. And he doesn't even need to have started a fight. The, the question becomes what happened as after he followed him. Did If Zimmerman confronted Trayvon Martin mm. and said, hey, just as the woman who Trayvon Martin was on the phone with says happened, and, and Zimmerman was the one who confronted Trayvon Martin, that's going to be a real tough defense. Mm. He's, it's going to be a really, really because hard... Because effectively, he will have started that's right. an aggressive move. How significant... Let me go to glory on this. How significant do you think, if it comes to a trial, and it's likely to, will be the fact that George Zimmerman makes the 911 call and is told, are you following? He says, yes, we don't need you to do that. OK. And then he clearly continues to follow Trayvon Martin. Well, I think uh, that's going to be important. Uh, there may also be an argument by the defense that he didn't continue to follow him, that he was retreating, uh, that Trayvon Martin then followed him. I, I don't know, because we'll have to wait to see what the facts are. But uh, I think the defense will try to defuse that I was following him type of argument. Thank you both uh, for now. Let me go now to Eric Deggins. We've following the case very closely. He's a TV and media critic of the Tampa Bay Times. Eric... How would you describe the mood down there uh, following this announcement today? I would say uh, among officials down here, it's probably a little bit of a relief. Um, this is the uh, eventuality that a lot of protesters wanted. Uh, they wanted to see Zimmerman arrested. They wanted to see him charged to the fullest extent possible, and that's happened. Uh, and there's been a lot of kind words between the Martins family and the prosecutor who's working this case. Uh, so I think there's a sense that everybody kind of wants things to calm down a little bit here. Uh, and, and there is a sense uh, as well I, with a lot of protesters that causing any kind of violence uh, would be contrary uh, to the health of the case, that it would hurt uh, the Martin family's case and might make the prosecution more difficult. So I think there is a sense that everybody wants things to kind of simmer down a little bit. And, and how helpful to that process has been the dignified way that Trayvon Martin's parents have conducted themselves because it's been, I think, quite remarkable. They've managed to avoid any inflammatory language. They have tried to calm things down wherever they've needed to. And they've also repeatedly stressed that all they've wanted, and they said this again today, was an arrest. They wanted the process of justice to take place. And without an arrest, that could never happen. How important has their demeanor, their behavior been? Oh, I think that's very important. And you saw when the new Black Panther Party uh, issued a bounty for George Zimmerman's uh, um, apprehension, uh, the attorney for the family uh, stepped out and said, we don't want that, and resisted that. Uh, I, I think they, they've been very smart in how they've handled the public face of the family. Uh, they've done key interviews well. They started speaking up early. Uh, as Al Sharpton said uh, today, uh, it's, it's that kind of public face that actually uh, seemed to pressure uh, prosecutors into moving forward with this arrest and prosecution in the first place. Eric Degenstein, Abrams and Gloria, thank you all very much indeed.
Coming up, Robert Zimmerman is the only family member to speak out today, and it's exclusively to me after the break. Robert Zimmerman, after the break.